Well, good morning, everyone. How's it going, juniors? Today is the 31st, and it looks like we're going to be doing some uh, unusual uh, classwork here. Um, I'll be putting these on SoundCloud or YouTube. I'll put the links in the little packet that I'll put on TeacherEase um, so that you know what's going on. We're going to uh, move on with um, the text and we're going to move on to chapter five in order to make this move along a little smoother and let's start with some fresh material and then we should be good to go. Uh, chapter five uh, starts off with uh, or basically is dealing with the marks of the church and so we have the four marks of the church and these four marks of the church are primarily what? They are visible signs. So we have the major marks of the church, the one holy, Catholic, and apostolic. You can see this starting on page 146. So the four marks of the church are primarily visible signs. Now, uh, here's a question for you. We know that the church is invisible and visible. It's an invisible and visible society, invisible and visible community. Now, here's the question. Would someone like to tell me how the church is an invisible and a visible community? Okay, first question. What does it mean to say that the church is both a visible and an invisible community. Well, obviously, one thing we can see some things and other things we cannot. The answer, the church established by Christ is present both on earth and in heaven. On earth, she is a visible community. And the church in purgatory and in heaven is invisible to us. At the same time, the spiritual riches which the church on earth possesses are also invisible. For example, the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist is invisible. Now, but the marks of the church are dealing with the visible. Now, this answer here gave quite a bit on the invisible. Uh, purgatory, heaven, the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. But the marks of the church are particularly dealing with the visible portion of the church. And what are those marks again? I can't remember. One holy, Catholic, and apostolic. That is correct. Now, another question for you, just to keep you using your noodle. What is the immediate practical value of the four marks. So what is the immediate practical value of the four marks? Well, the four marks, they help distinguish the true pilgrim church on earth from any others that claim to be Christ's church. Now, that's a pretty uh, powerful statement. They help to distinguish the true church, or as the classroom text states, the true pilgrim church on earth from any others that claim to be Christ's church. Now, let's take a little look at my Catholic faith textbook, the uh, burgundy one with the gold letters that I've showed you a number of times. And let's see what my Catholic faith has to say about this uh, importance of distinguishing the true church. Now, the my Catholic faith on page 100 has the question, which I will read a rather long answer to. We have on page 100, is there any way by which we can distinguish the church that Christ founded from all other churches? And we can distinguish, here's the answer, we can distinguish the church founded by Christ from all other churches by the marks or signs that our Lord gave to it. So the marks are signs that our Lord gave to it. 
and we have a little description of this. A mark is a sign by which something may be distinguished from all others of the same kind. So by its marks, we can recognize the true church as the one founded by Jesus Christ, distinguishing it from all other churches, however similar. So it is important that we know which is the church established by Christ in order that we may obey it as God commands. Then shall we also be certain what to believe and do in order to be saved. The church, that true church, will be our guide to heaven. I now want to read a little bit from page 146 in the text. Um, I'll have a, about a paragraph here, and then we'll have a catechism reading as well. So these marks are signs that we can distinguish. So although these characteristics are the church's very essence, she does not possess them on her own. All that the church has, she receives from God. Through the gift of the Holy Spirit, Christ sustains the church and continues to make her one holy, Catholic, and apostolic. As we will see, it is to the Catholic Church alone that Christ gives these characteristics in their fullness. Now, there's going to be uh, ecclesial bodies out there that will have partial elements of the church. So we're looking at the fullness. The Catechism Passage, CCC 811. This is the sole Church of Christ, which in the Creed we profess to be one, holy, Catholic, and apostolic. These four characteristics, inseparably linked with each other, indicate essential features of the Church and her mission. The Church does not possess them of herself. It is Christ who, through the Holy Spirit, makes his Church one, holy, Catholic and apostolic. It is he who calls her to realize each of these qualities. Now, that is the basic first page. We're looking at signs and marks that distinguish which church is the true church. Those marks are one holy, Catholic, and apostolic, known as the four marks of the church. And we will look at each of these uh, individually. But on page 147, we have in this chapter, we will address several questions. Of course, but now I'll basically stop after about the fourth bullet point here for our purposes today. What are the four marks of the church? And what does it mean that the church is one? How has the unity of the church been wounded? And what ecumenical efforts are being made at present? Now, Let's go into the first mark of the church, which of course we know is one. So in the creed, we state our belief in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. And many times we can say this uh, and never think about what it really means. We have a whole chapter for this, and we'll take a look at exactly what this means, but it starts with one. Yes, the understanding of the church being one, it can be slightly divisive. Um, it can sound exclusive, not terribly inclusive, but it is necessary. One is of fundamental and foundational importance for understanding the other three. So understanding the one uh, helps to understand the um, Holy Catholic and Apostolic. Understanding one helps with the Holy Catholic and Apostolic. One describes the church's uniqueness and its singularity on one hand, and one reflects the origins of the church. So we have the word one, describing the church's uniqueness and its singularity and singleness, and one reflects the origins of the church. 